Resin 3D printing does not have to be hard. There are actually very few things to get right to enjoy consistent success. This here is my pre-flight checklist for happy and successful printing. And as we can see, there's really only five things here that we need to account for. One of which is the temperature of our resin. This detail is important and you will have a shit time trying to print your miniatures if you can't meet this requirement. Now obviously there can be a lot more nuance here if you want there to be, but in my experience if you can account for at least these five things here, you will likely never have the need to go any deeper on the technicalities of resin 3D printing and can just enjoy printing miniatures print after print. So how do we make sure our resin is sufficiently warm? Well, you could buy a printer that comes from factory with some kind of heating built in, for example the GK2 which has been pretty popular for this exact reason. That printer though is not cheap, and I actually don't recommend it, not just for the eye-watering price tag, but that there are machines for half the price with more features that are actually built way better in my opinion, and don't feel so cheap and flimsy. I've also spoken with people who actually design these things, and it seems that locating the heat source below the LCD is not a popular choice as it potentially reduces the service life of the LCD and other components. There's also the new Mono M7 Pro from Anycubic, which comes with a built-in heater. This actually heats the resin via a pump that's connected directly to your vat. And while I personally haven't used this, I absolutely hate anything that complicates the cleaning process. Sometimes you want to change resin, sometimes you have to drain the vat for maintenance. This kind of thing I think would be more trouble than it's worth, but that's just speculation on my part. Let me know if you'd like to see one here on this channel and I'll try and get one in and I'll give it a go and see if it is as much a pain in the ass as I think it is. So what are your options if you buy a printer that doesn't come with inbuilt heating? Are you out of luck and doomed to suffer at the whims of your environment? Or is there something we can do here that won't break the bank and check off this requirement for happy, successful 3D printing? I'm gonna try here today two options and answer that question. The first solution that we're going to try here is a brewer's belt, also known as a fermentation belt. I've seen these recommended before online, and I've been keen to try one out for myself. This is a very simple device with an incredibly low cost. This one here was just $12 on eBay. And really, it's just a long wire sheathed in some kind of rubber or silicone that heats up nice and warm when you plug it in. And all we got to do here is wrap this around our vat and do our best to make sure it's making good surface to surface contact along at least two sides of the vat. And I have seen some people recommend that you glue these on, but let's just try wrapping it around as tight as we can first. I'm using here the new Saturn 4 printer from Elegoo for these tests. And it looks like this particular fermentation belt wraps almost perfectly around, fitting snugly beneath those vat screws, but unfortunately being a little bit too long where this loop terminates. To work around this, I just snipped that loop, carefully put a couple of holes through the rubber and have secured the belt tightly in place around that vat using some zip ties. Actually, before we run off and print something with this, I first need to run a control print here with no heating at all. We're currently smack bang in the middle of winter right now in Australia with the temperature outdoors overnight getting below 10 degrees C or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think should definitely be cold enough to cause us some issues here. I'm also going to be using Frozen's Red Clay Aqua 8K Resin because I know from a recent experience that this stuff will fail when printed in temperatures as low as 15 degrees C or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I'm hoping that this will clearly show us the effectiveness of using our different heating solutions versus no heating at all. This here is what a successful print is going to look like. There's three miniatures in total, an orc, a dwarf, and a space marine, and each one has a printed base as well. And if you like the look of any of these miniatures, I'll tell you soon where you can get them. I'm setting the printer up in my outdoor laundry here. This tiny little room is essentially completely exposed to the elements with no doorways or windows, and so is functionally outside. I did attempt to block any sunlight that might come through the window during the day by using this block of XPS foam, but that's doing nothing to insulate this space, as you'll see here in a second. All these prints for these tests were run late at night or early in the morning when the temperature was at its coldest. And you can see here as we begin our first test print with no heating that we're sitting at a nice and nippy 10 degrees C. And what's cool about this Saturn 4, which I didn't notice earlier when I did my first impressions video, is that it actually has an onboard temperature so we can see it's 10 degrees C inside the printer as well. 
first test results are as expected. It was so cold that we couldn't even establish build plate adhesion, so no surprises there. This print was a complete failure, and after cleaning out the vat, I installed our fermentation belt and begun our second test. With the heat belt installed, I lowered the build plate into the vat just below the surface of the resin, and then waited a couple of hours before starting the print. I wanted to make sure that everything that needs to be warm has plenty of opportunity to do so. Now unfortunately it was a little bit warmer this night, up at around 16 degrees, and you can see with the heat belt installed, the printer's internal temperature is reading 23 degrees, which was bloody awesome to see, and this print was a complete success. But I can already hear you now. The difference in temp from our control test is significant enough that it becomes questionable if the heater is entirely responsible for this successful print, and I agree, so I waited until the following night when we again had 10 degrees reading on the mercury and ran our second test with the fermentation belt. first glance, this print appears to be entirely successful, which I was very excited to see, as this now proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that this $12 item is capable of solving the issue of heating for resin 3D printing. But unfortunately, build plate adhesion had failed for a single model, the 32mm base for this marine. Good news is though, that based on everything else adhering fine, we could definitely recover that base in a subsequent print by just increasing our burn-in exposure value by 10 to 15 seconds or so. So I am stoked with that, and this is in fact a huge success. So let's rate it. Cost, five out of five. Effectiveness, four out of five. And implementation, I'm gonna give a three out of five, just because it is a little bit fiddly. And regardless of how you do it, whether you choose to glue it in or use zip ties like I did, none of these are really that elegant. But hey, for an overall score of 12 out of 15, that is pretty damn good. Now, before we take a look at our next heating solution, I would first like to invite you to buy me a coffee or join my Patreon if you're finding these videos valuable and have a few bucks to spare to help me continue to produce them. This would have been a good video to jam some sponsorship in for some company you probably don't even care about, but I've been opting not to do that in favor of direct fan support as it helps me keep these videos honest and on topic. And I'm not looking to make a ton of money here. I just want to make sure my bills are paid and that I can look after my little rabbits, Mary and Pippa. I'm really excited to let you know though that in partnership with these artists, I can actually give you a bunch of cool STLs as well for your 3D printing enjoyment if you come and join my membership. We've got models from Arcane Whiskers, Artifices Mini, Dungeons and Dreadnoughts, Imp 3D, Sion, Lucas with a C, Moid, Neoteric Miniatures, Skulltown Minis, Smuggler Boutique, and Tractor Minis. Seriously, there is a lot of great stuff here and it is incredible value. And yeah, I'm so grateful to these artists. Uh, if you can't become a member today, that's totally cool. At least go check out these artists for whom I've left links in the video description. But yeah, hope to see you over there. You're also gonna get access to our incredible Discord server. And there's a bunch of STLs in the welcome pack as well, which no matter what point in time you sign up, you can get everything that's in there. So highly recommend it. Come sign up, come help these videos be a thing. And uh, yeah, now the final heating solution, let's go. So I've talked about this product in the past here on this channel and I now finally got my hands on one so I can see for myself if it's a good recommendation or not. And what we're looking at here is the Chitu Systems Mini Heater. This little guy has a heating element inside it and a fan which then blows that heat into your printer's enclosure and it's on a little maneuverable stand so you can manipulate it to point it directly at your resin vat and it simply attaches via a magnet to this little sticky metal plate. It also comes with a rubber edge sealer gasket thingy, which you could run around the lip of your printer's enclosure, but I suspect that that's overkill given my experience with any Cubix blower heater, so I'm just gonna leave this off. And I'll talk more about the other blower heater options here in a minute. This heater is more expensive than our first option, the Brewer Belt, coming in at 60 bucks, but maybe this is the ultimate solution for aftermarket resin 3D printer heating. Let's find out. 
Uh, but first, full disclosure, this unit was provided for use here on the channel by Chitu Systems. And they have also given me a coupon code to share with you that should work for anything on their store. So if you want to buy this or you need to buy a replacement LCD or something else, I like their Conjure Sculpt Resin. I thought that stuff was particularly good. Um, yeah, take advantage of this code, might as well. Um, but do know that it will count as an affiliate commission and help support this channel. So just so you're aware of that bias, but I'm still gonna share whether this thing works or not and talk about the other options on the market, which I will also leave affiliate links for. <laughs> so do with that what you will. There's not much room inside the enclosure of the Saturn IV, but thankfully there was just enough to squeeze this heater into the back right corner there. And while I couldn't quite get it to point directly at the vat, I was able to get it sort of blowing across the top, which hopefully it's fine. Again, I left it to run for a couple of hours to let everything heat up before printing. The temperature was nice and chilly, coming in at just over 10 degrees at the start of the print, and the onboard temperature sensor of the Saturn read 17 degrees. And this night ended up being the coldest, because when I came back to check on this print, the temperature had dropped all the way down to about 7 degrees. And you know what? It worked great. And this time, everything was present on the build plate. No failed bed adhesion, no failed layer adhesion. This result is excellent and I couldn't be happier. Let's rate this one. Three out of five for cost. 60 bucks ain't cheap, but it's better than paying for a printer with inbuilt heating. Effectiveness gets a five out of five and implementation I'm gonna give a three out of five as well, just because this thing is kind of fiddly to install, uh, but also the fan is quite noisy. That gives the Chitu Systems blower heater a total heating score of 11 out of 15, which means I think the fermentation belt is the winner here today. Let's quickly talk about the other blower heater options though, as there's more than just this Chitu Systems one now. There's also the Anycubic blower heater, which you can now buy on its own for about $30 on AliExpress, which is kind of nuts, because I recently had a print fail for another video using this same frozen Aqua 8K resin. The temperature had dipped below 15 degrees and there was all sorts of delamination issues. And so I ran that same print again using this heater and it was a complete success. So this one is a great option. It's also quiet in its operation, uh, but you should know it's quite bulky compared to the Chitu Systems blower. And it's a very snug fit inside the Saturn IV, for example. There is also now a mini heater being produced by Elegoo, which I literally just got in today as I'm finishing up the editing of this video. So keep an eye out for my Saturn IV Ultra video, which will hopefully be coming out soon, where I will test this as well. So my advice is just buy a fermentation belt first. They're so cheap, it's basically a no-brainer. And if that solves the problem for you, which it should, then great. Otherwise, take a look at these blower heaters, get the Chitu Systems one for the most flexibility when it comes to install. It'll be a lot easier to get this one inside cramped spaces exactly where you need it. Or if you can fit it, get the Anycubic and save a few dollars. Finally, I would love to see one of my peers reproduce these same tests in a sub-zero environment, specifically with the fermentation belt because I remember seeing Uncle Jesse printing in the snow a while back now with a blower style heater. But yeah, it only gets so cold here in my backyard and I would love to see more videos on this topic. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Patreon.com, buymeacoffee.com. Join these legends here, get cool STLs, come say hi on the Discord, and I'll be back soon with more cool printing shit. <laughs>